Let us bow our heads just a moment now for a word of prayer. Most holy and righteous God, we want to thank Thee for Thy loving kindness, for it is better to us than life. And we pray that You will meet with us tonight in a very special way and give us of Thy blessings. May we see the great outstretched hand of our loving Savior to minister to the sick and to the afflicted, and to give a welcome hand to those who are weary in the road of sin tonight, to invite them to the Father's house where they are expected to be. We would ask you to remember those who've strayed from the straight and narrow way, that they too might come back to the fellowship of the Father again. And we pray tonight, Lord, that you will open the ears of the people to hear the gospel, and that you will circumcise the lips of the speaker, and let us just be used for thy glory. And at the end of this service, when we go to our different places, may that we say like those who came from Emmaus, did not our hearts burn within us? as he talked to us along the way. For we ask it in the name of thy Son, the Lord Amen. Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. <coughs> I wish to read some out of the Scriptures tonight, the 17th chapter of St. Luke, and beginning with the, the 26th verse. And as it was in the days of Noah... So shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered in the ark, and the floods came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, fire and brimstone rained from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. And for a text I wish to take from Genesis, the 19th chapter, and the, the 22nd verse. Hasten thee, and come hither, for I can do nothing till thou hast come thither. <clears throat> this morning I was speaking of the oncoming judgments, and tonight I wish to continue we can feel the hot winds of the nearing judgment of the Almighty God. As we begin to feel these things, it behooves us to kindly watch where we're living in the hour that we're passing through. And some time ago it was my privilege to visit India. And just before I come to India, they had the great earthquake. And I was reading in the newspapers in India that how that about two days before the earthquake come, they seemed to know that something was wrong. All the little birds that lived in the crevices in the big buildings, and lived along the great stone walls. Much of India has stone walls. And all the little birds that had their nest in those crevices left the walls. And all of the cattle that usually stood around the big buildings in the afternoon in the shade, and around the great stone walls, for about two days before the earthquake, 
All these animals and little birds went out in the middle of the field to stand. You see, there was something about it that God was taking care of his little birds and his animals. You know, the same God that directed them in the ark in the early days when it was destroyed by water at the preaching of Noah, that same God still lives and reigns today and he has his control of his beings. And I was thinking if God was so mindful of his little birds and his cattle and sheep to take them away from destruction before it struck, how much more mindful of of his children who has been born of his spirit, washed in his blood. He is mindful for them. And as he warned the little birds to go from their dwelling places, I truly believe that he's warning his people today. As we see the great signs of his coming at hand, I believe that God is warning his people to come together and a great calling out in this last day. My subject tonight is, will the church go before the, the tribulation? Now, it's later than you think. It's so late until I believe it's almost too late in America. We're just at the end of the road. And this morning while I was preaching on Babylon and its Conditions, I thought it would be very good tonight to bring in some of the Bible to show how close we were to the coming of the Lord. And we can see we, with our natural eye that something is fixing to take place. There is such a, a disturbance among the people. It's just hard to try to have a revival. The churches are so different and at each other's throats because of denominational barriers. And the Christians are so nervous, seems like, and upset. But you know, it's strange, but our Lord said when these things begin to take place to look up, that our redemption was drawing nigh. As we see His great mercy as it's being projected to us, seeing His hands of great signs and wonders, which our eyes will be open in a few minutes to watch. And then it gives us this most solemn consolation to know that the God of the Bible still lives today. And He loves His children. And He's giving them warning. And those who are spiritual minded come out. And we noticed in the days that Jesus was speaking of, he said, as it was in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot. Now at each junction of time, God has always gave a call of mercy before a call of judgment. Now, if you're historians, and I have been studying history this week and last two or three weeks, the Ananiasian fathers of the ancient history of the church just before the uh, Nicene Council, and then was forming the Catholic Church in the 1500 years of Dark Ages. And I see that in that Nicene writings of the pre-Nicene Council, that they were having just the same as we are today. Oh, how it does repeat itself. And to see the condition of the church and the condition of the people and the signs of the times, they're wrote everywhere. Now, before God ever does anything, at each junction of time, He always sends 
mercy, an angel, a prophet, a message. And as every time yet it's all been spurned, the church don't want to receive it. Noah, he spoke of Noah here and he preached 120 years. And though his message was mercy, the people failed to heed his teaching. It was something that was to save them. And yet they would not listen. And if that isn't a very beautiful picture of the times of today. Now you might say to me, Brother Branham, how can you say beautiful and painting the picture to us that you are painting? It's beautiful because the Lord Jesus is coming soon for His church and it's the most beautiful thought that any creature of God's could ever think of to get out of this chaos and get into His blessed glory. Where the old will be young and the sick will be healed forever. There will be no more sorrows or heartaches. But that ain't the most beautiful thing I can think of. And how blessed it is for those who wait for that gathering time. Now we find out as Jesus referred back in the days of Noah. Let's just go back because he said take an example of that day. Now when Cain and Abel, when Cain had slew Abel, and then saith took his place, we find that Satan was trying to destroy that seed that should come. That God had promised that the seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent's seed. And Satan was trying to destroy that royal seed. And he thought he did it when he destroyed Abel. But God raised Seth up in his place. A very beautiful picture of the death and resurrection of Christ. And the royal seed coming. Then it's remarkable to notice that how on the side of Cain, they become very religious. And they were church going people. And so was Cain a church-going person. He worshipped the Lord. He built an altar. He belonged to church. He paid his debts. He was in every respect as a man could look at him of being a real believer. But there's only three classes of people. That's believers, unbelievers, and make-believers. And the world's still full of them tonight. And Cain was just making belief. And out of his lineage come a great group of church-going people. Very religious. Now, this is most unusual. But did you notice that out of his side come the cultured, educated race? The Bible plainly states it. He said they were building. And they were doing great things. Science came out of the lineage of Cain. And the great scientific and the doctors... And the great men come out of the lineage of Cain. Where the other side was a, a poor peasant type of people. But they were people who believed their God to be real. Oh, God number me with them. And just before the end time come, there was a great confusion. And the great church side looked like it had won out just as it is today for the science. And another great thing, he said they were building. There has never been a time in history that building has been so great as it is now. It's one of the signs of the end time. Never have we had a time of building. And now, even in our little city here, 
I can't find enough room to go rabbit hunting anymore. It's all housing projects. Just building and planning. And if we'd open our eyes, it's what a God signpost that the end is at hand. And we were preaching this morning on the Sputniks and the missiles. How they can stand in Moscow and direct a missile to the middle of 4th Street in Louisville. And never leave Moscow. And it'll blow a hole in the ground 175 feet deep for 150 miles around it. That's how big the hole would be. Three of them would destroy the entire world. Shake it from its orbit. Science. You see what side it's on? It's on the wicked side. God expects His children to trust Him for everything that they have. But we want to trust the hand of man. I'd rather have my hopes built in Christ, taking my solemn stand upon His grace and mercy, than any educated group of people who would form an organization and say, this is the way. Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. And no man cometh to the Father except he comes by me. Therefore, you can see it's a great day of education. It's a great day of world strife. And right in the midst of that, they must have had a greater scientific world than we have now. They built the pyramids. We haven't got one thing that would build a pyramid. If you were ever near it. I've been at it in Egypt and the ones in Mexico. And way city blocks high would be boulders that would weigh up to hundreds of tons built up there in the top of that great mammoth building. And it's so perfectly hewed out until there's not even room for a razor blade. It was so masterly cut out. Oh, what a day of science. And also, it's set so perfect in the center of the earth that no matter where the sun is, there's never a shadow around it. I doubt whether we could equal it today in our modern science. But Jesus said, as it was in that day, so will it be in the coming of the Son of God. Now, and Noah preached 120 years. And notice, he was laughed at. Now, Jesus also said, that as it was in the days of Lot, that it would be in the days of Lot, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, planning, building, selling, buying. Oh, there never was a day that's so much commercial as today. Just used car lots and everything. So much to you can buy a refrigerator this year and pay about four or five hundred dollars for it. And next year, nobody wants it. It's out of style. Don't you see where the commercial world has your nose to the grind wheel? You can buy a car this year. And next year, it's probably as good as the one you could buy it then. But it'll depreciate a thousand dollars because they changed the radiator cap. Or they done some little silly something to it. It's only a sales talk to fulfill the Bible as it was in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot. Although each time angels appeared, prophets rose, and their message has always been grace, mercy, and deliverance. God's message has always been deliverance just before the end time. Check it through the scriptures. How Noah preached deliverance. 
And they laughed at them and made fun of them. And were scoffed at. And as it was in them days, so is it today. And when you go forth with a message that Christ has raised from the dead, as He promised, He would show Himself forth. And they do today to that message just like they did to the message in the other day. Lot went out into Sodom and tried his best to get his kindred to listen to the angel's message. But they mocked at him and said that he was making fun. Oh, what a picture of this day! When you bring to them the message of God's deliverance, they say you're making fun of religion. You're trying to impersonate something. <laughs> Same type of a group. What an hour we're living in. Well, they think that they're the only ones that's going to be saved. They think they're the only ones that's preaching the gospel. Jesus said, These signs shall follow them that believe. It isn't my word, it's His word. And notice, I want you to notice quickly the type of message it was. Oh, this just thrills my heart. When I think of Sodom and Gomorrah had got so polluted morally until Proverbs was everywhere. But just before the final great destruction, God sent a prophet down there. And I'm thinking of also He sent an angel down there. And I want you to notice the angel's message. Abraham, who had tucked his way with the Lord's despised few, he set out in the, the desert where the grounds were poor. And Lot went in and become the mayor of the city. And he was a great man among sin. I'd rather not be so popular and be right with God. <laughs> but Lot was very popular. And he sat in the streets, in the city gate. He was a judge of what could come in and what could not come in. And there he was, giving his life into fornications and knowing that in his city such things went on. If that isn't a picture of today in our nation, uncensored programs, all kinds of folly, meanness, divisiveness, Oh, they could break it up if they wanted to, but they don't want to. And they can't do it because God said it would be this way. If they could only open their eyes and could understand. And notice, just before the great crucial hour come, Abraham and Sarah, who set out under the oak tree, one day while they were out there, Sarah saw some man coming and she took off towards the tent. What a difference to the women of this day and how different it would have been down in Sodom. Come time for the men to come home, they all get on their little short clothes and go out and get the lawn mow. What a difference. But Sarah went to the tent and when she did these men came up and Abraham looked at them. They seemed to be rather strange looking men. And one of them seemed to be the spokesman. And when he sat down and began to talk with Abraham, Abraham said, be seated here and I'll go fetch a little water and I'll wash your feet and I'll need a little bread and we'll get ready and you can eat a morsel of meat and then you can go on. And when he ran out into the herd and found a fatted calf and killed it, told Sarah to knead a little bread and to make some cakes, and he talked to the man. 
I believe that somehow or other Abraham knew who that was. And the man that was a speaker had his back turned to the tent. He was the messenger of that day. And he said, Abraham, I'm going to visit you according to the promise. Twenty-five years before. I made you a promise. And I'm going to stay with it. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. God made a promise in the last days. He'd pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. And He'll stay with it. Jesus made a promise and said, The things that I do shall you do also. And He'll stay with it. For He's just. And Abraham looked at him. And he said, Just about this time next month, according to life that was with Sarah, I'm going to visit you and Sarah's going to bring a baby that I promised. Now, Abraham was a hundred years old and Sarah was 90. And Sarah, behind the angel, inside the tent, went right. And the angel with his back turned said, Why did Sarah life? That was the messenger. Oh, do you know what I'm speaking about? What kind of a mental telepathy was that? With his back turned to the tent in her inside. And she smiled. And he said, why did she laugh? He knew it. And that was the last message before Sodom and Gomorrah burned. Brother, if you hear it tonight, it's now the last message before this world will burn. See the nature of the angel? Who was that angel? It was God. Remember, Abraham called him Lord. And the translation there is Elohim. The great mighty Jehovah. It was Jesus Christ reincarnated. Someone said, do you mean to say that was how do you get that body? Why do you just call them two angels and breathe the little breath like that in the atoms and calcium and potash come together and Gabriel stepped in one and another angel in the other and he made one for himself. Amen. Blessed be his holy name. Amen. I am so glad tonight to know that that same almighty God who could make himself a body to live in. My trust is in him that someday he'll raise this one up as he has promised to do. And he's in our midst of doing the very same thing that he done there. Oh, praise his glorious name. Giving us warning. Speaking to us. Telling us to make ready. Of course, he said a little while, and the world will see me no more. Yet ye shall see me, for I'll be with you even in you to the end of the world. What an hour that we're living in. Notice, the angel that brought fire was the one who performed that miracle. And we all know that the world's going to be destroyed the next time by fire. And the angel that was sent to Sodom and Gomorrah, look what Jesus said. Oh, it just thrills my soul to get to that. As it was in the days of Noah. So will it be at the coming of the Son of Man. What did that angel do? He had the spirit of discernment. And he said, as it was then... So will it be when the Son of Man is being revealed from heaven. Do you see it? Just think that in our midst now stands that same angel of God, which is none other but the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and the form of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's in our midst. And that day, and he was God, and that was his message just before the destruction came. Now we will notice that it was a message of deliverance. He went down and tried to deliver the people, and they refused to hear him. And today, it's the same thing in our nation, Amen. among our people. I've had the privilege of seeing our Lord Jesus in the meetings do signs and wonders. Hallelujah. And great things. Amen. And the people will actually stand at the platform Hallelujah. and know beyond a shadow of doubt that the, that the great immortal infant God is present and performing the same kind of a miracle and they'll stand there and chew chewing gum and walk off the platform. I'm concerned. They don't care. It looks to me like if a man had any kind of a spirituality about him or the Spirit of God in him, and when he seen the Lord Jesus do just what he said he would do, it would thrill his heart in such a way that he couldn't hold his peace any longer. He would set the nation afire with the message. As it was in them days, he said, so will it be. That message went forth, and they merely laughed at it and mocked at it as someone who was telling some kind of an idle tale. But it was of mercy, and it was of grace, and it was of deliverance. Oh, my! And the angel said that morning to Lot, after he'd give the message, he said, hasten, come hither. For I can do nothing till thou hast come hither. I want you to notice this now. Because we have to cut short here on account of the prayer line. Did you notice what the angel said? I can't do nothing till you've come hither. Why was it? It was a message of deliverance. And before one speck of fire could fall from heaven, Lot had to get out of Sodom. And before one drop of rain fell from heaven, Noah went into the ark. And before the atom bomb can strike this nation, the church will go in the rapture to meet the Lord Jesus. And if the Sputniks and the missiles are set, and the hammers are pulled back, the angels are all standing in order. Hallelujah. 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 The great quarters of heaven is crowded full. Hallelujah. The harps are all in tune. Amen. The great bands are already practiced up. Hallelujah. There's a homecoming time pretty soon for the church Hallelujah. of the living God Amen. who's been waiting His coming. Amen. Everything's in order. Amen. I'm so glad. I'm getting so tired. <laughs> oh, for that great hour. Hallelujah. And to think that we've had a part in this junction time. Amen. Remember, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. When the Son of Man is being revealed from heaven. Now remember, before the rain fell, Noah was in the ark. Before the fire fell, Lot was out of Sodom. For the angel said, I can't do nothing until you come hither. I've got the lever in my hand to pull and make the fires fall from heaven. And I think that's exactly the angel of destruction is holding the hand of Russia with the atomic bombs until the church comes together and one great body of Christ. I can't do nothing till you come hither. Oh, if that isn't a blessed assurance. And if we see everything set in order, the going home of the church is in order. Here's the angel of God with the same message, performing the same signs, the same wonders, 
everything set in order. Branham Tabernacle, 25 years ago nearly, I spoke over this same pulpit and told you these things were be happening one of these days. Here it is. We're at the end time. The junction is here. It's near home going time for the church. The critics making fun, mocking, scoffing as it was with King Nebuchadnezzar and Belteshazzar. So was he in the days of Noah. So was in the days of Lot. And they're doing the same today. I can do nothing until you come hither. I want you to notice. Lot came out of something that would destroy him. And Noah went into something that would save him. And that's a type of the church. We come out of the world and away from this Elvis Presley and Arthur Godfrey age that we're living in. Come out of the world and go into Christ. Come out of the world there. Of the world will perish with the world. Those that are in Christ will go home with Christ. For those that sleep in Christ will God bring with Him when He comes. We come out of the world to go into Christ for the safety. Oh, but I can do nothing till thou hast come hither. I like that. Hurry. Escape. The message was urgent. Hurry. Hurry. Escape. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus promised this gospel to be preached. It's been going on now for years and years. And here it is at the end time, the last great sign. Just before the angels hollered, Hurry! He turned and said, Why did Sarah laugh? The angel of destruction. He said, I've heard about their sins and I've come down to see if it was the truth or not. And he found that it was the truth. And the message was grace and mercy and deliverance. But hurry! Hurry! Oh, children! Don't sit stooped and wondering. Hurry! Hurry quick! The time is at hand! Run where? Out like the little birds did. Get away from these big modern walls of Babylon. These big old denominations that says there's no difference in the time. These big old unbelieving churches that says there's no such a thing as divine healing. There's no miracles. Get away from them walls for they're going to crumble. They're going down in destruction and defeat because my God said so. Right out in the middle of Calvary under. If the birds went to the trees, you go to the tree too. That tree where Christ was crucified, they're hanging in the middle of His mercy and cry to God until the storm is past. Hurry, escape, get hither, for I can't do nothing until you come out. He's waiting on you. Get away from these old modern things. Get away from that television when them kind of plays come on. Get to turn that radio off when this rock and roll starts. Act like a lady. Dress like a lady. Act like a man. Dress like a man. Talk like a Christian. Live like a Christian. Get all the bridges burnt. Hurry, get out. Destruction is at hand. God's sick and tired. Oh, it is later than you think. The hour is at hand. The angel's mercy. The angel of mercy who sent his message is right here tonight. Do you believe it? Does the church have to go before the tribulation period? Look. Israel went into Goshen and Egypt went into darkness. Egypt got into Goshen was taken to the promised land. Egypt went into darkness and was buried in the Dead Sea. Hurry! Hurry and escape! That may be your last opportunity. And remember, we see the missile setting. We hear them. We look at it in the paper. The whole world's a trim and everything that God said is coming to pass. Then what about it? In the day that the Son of Man shall reveal Himself from heaven. What has the Son of Man been revealed? 
Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Look here at the 21st verse, or the 30th verse it is. Even thus shall it be in the days when the Son of Man is revealed from heaven. What is it? These messages, this thing has never happened since Jesus is on earth. And here it is at the end of the Gentile age. Let's look at it just a moment and think hard. When Jesus was here on earth, he did not claim to be a healer. He said, it's not me that doeth the works, it's my Father. But I only do what the Father shows me to do. St. John 5, 19, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself but what he sees the Father doing. If you notice, Philip, when he first got converted, though he first started his ministry, the Lord Jesus, what happened? Let's see how the Son of Man's going to reveal himself. If he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, he'll have to reveal himself like he did yesterday. If he reveals the same, he'll have to reveal the same message. Quietly and watch. When Peter come to him after his ministry, St. John 1, Peter walked up to him. He wasn't called Peter then. He was called another name. And when he walked up to him, he said, Thou art Simon, and your father is Jonas. That old fisherman thought, How did he know me? And then Philip from Bethesda also. He goes over around the mountain and he finds a friend, Nathaniel, under a tree praying. He said, Come see who he found. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Watch now how he revealed himself. And he said, Now could there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? He said, Come and see. That's the best answer any man can give another. Don't criticize it. Come find out for yourself. Oh, if we could only be that sincere today. And on his road around, he began to instruct him. Why, he said, Peter, yesterday a man, see fish, you know the old fisherman? Yes, he walked up before this man, and he told him who he was and who his daddy was. Ah, said Nathaniel, I don't know about that. And when he walked up where Jesus was into the line where he was praying for the sick, Jesus pierced those eyes at him, and he said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. How do you know he's an Israelite? The Greeks are all dressed alike and looked alike. How do you know he was an Israelite? He was God manifested in flesh. What did he do? He looked and he seen him. He said, when did you know me, Rabbi? He said, before Philip called you when you were under the tree, I saw you. He said, that settles it. Amen. You are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, because I told you this, do you believe? He said, then you can see greater things than this. But the unbelieving church members stood by. Oh, just as reverent and staunch as they could be. Certainly, they were standing there with great educations, great uh, theological seminary experiences. They said, this man is a fortune teller. He's Beelzebub. Jesus said, you say that to me, I'll forgive you. But when the Holy Ghost is come and does the same thing, one word against it will never be forgiven. In this world and neither in the world to come. There was a little woman who had an issue of blood. And she come to the crowd and she touched his garment. For she said within herself, If I can touch the man, I'll be made well. She touched him. She ran off in the crowd and sat down or whatever she did. And Jesus turned about and said, Who touched me? Peter rebuked him. He said, look, the whole crowd's are touching him. Why do you say who touched me? He said, but I got weak. Virtue or strength went from me. And he looked around with those eyes. Until he found her. How did he do it? That we don't know. But he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he revealed himself to the Jewish nation in that manner. When he come to the Samaritans, the woman was at the well, a lovely Samaritan woman. You remember, there's only three nations of people. That's Jew, Gentile, and Samaritan, Ham, Sham, and Japheth's people. And the Samaritan was half Jew and half Gentile. You remember when it started, when they married their women and so forth. And this young woman come up there, which we believe in our country to be a woman of ill fame. But she wasn't. 
This boy from India could tell you that. This is an Eastern book, and you're trying to read it with a Western education. When I went to India and got off of the, sh of the airship at Bombay, there was a bishop of the Methodist Church, and all of them standing there said, Don't you tell us you're a missionary, Mr. Branham. We know more about the Bible than you Yankees will ever know. And that's true. He said, We had the Bible 2,000 years before you was a nation. That's right. St. Thomas Church is still there where St. Thomas went out and preached. But he said, we understand that God has visited you to make this Bible live again. <laughs> said, that's what we want to know. That's it. The world's hungry for the living bread. This Samaritan woman, as she stood at the well, Jesus said to her, woman, bring me a drink. Well, she said they had segregation. But he let her know that there was no difference. God made of one blood all peoples. And he said... If you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. And the conversation went on until he caught her spirit. Then he found out what her trouble was. He said, go get your husband and come here. What happened when the Jew was told that? The Jew said, you're the son of God. That's right. What happened to the Samaritan when she was told that? He said, go get your husband and come here. She said, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Now we know that when the Messiah, which is called Christ, when he comes, he'll tell us these things. But who are you? He said, I'm he that speaks to you. She ran into the city and she said, come see a man that told me the things that I've done. Isn't this the Messiah? And he never did that one time to a Gentile. Why? He left it to this day. That's what he said here. In the days when the Son of Man shall reveal himself from heaven. He's revealing Himself now to the church for mercy. The next time He reveals Himself is in destruction to those who's rejected the message. God be merciful for, to us while we pray just a moment. Softly and tenderly, Sister Gertie, if you will. I just wonder tonight, feeling sorry for you standing around the wall, I can feel your anticipations. I just wonder, oh, if you'll be honest with yourself and with God just a moment. Do you really want to hurry and get out of this? There's a man in the presence tonight called the Lord Jesus. He has a ticket for you. And all you have to do is just give him your heart. He'll wash it in his own blood. And cleanse you from all sin and doubt. And will take you to his heaven. When he comes and it might come before morning. The Sputniks. There's not one thing the science says. You hear it every day on the radio. When they're on the television. When they're interviewing these signs. They say there's not a thing to hinder this world from being blown up at any minute. It just takes a good drink of vodka. And they'll pull a lever and that's it. Hurry! The message is urgent. Hurry, escape! Run for your life! Get out of it! Come out from this modern Babylon. Get away from the walls. Can't you feel something tugging at your heart? If you're real spiritual, and God speaking to you, surely if He spoke to those little birds, He can speak to you. Would you raise your hand to me? You haven't got room to put the people around the altar. But if you just raise your hand and say, God be merciful to me. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Oh, my. All over the building. I don't know how many hands there is. Be merciful to me, oh God. This is my hand. I want to escape, Lord. Before morning, I might hear a scream. I looked out and the rainbows would be floating through the skies. The Son of Man would be coming. What a terrible day that you missed your opportunity. You stood right around your church, didn't you? Oh, you said, Mama belonged to this. That's all right, brother. That's all right, sister. But Mama's salvation will never take you in. Mama lived in one day and you're living in another. Hear the message of the Lord. Hear the warning of the Spirit. What kind of a spirit was it? That one who discerned the, how Sarah was laughing. 
on the inside of a tent. The angel of the Lord. Now with your heads bowed, I want to pray for each one of you. What did you do when you put your hands up? You said, did that mean anything, Brother Branham? Sure did. If you really meant that, it meant the difference between death and life. The message is urgent. Won't you put your hand up right now? Be merciful, God, to me. God bless the little girl. God bless the lady. God bless you, you, sonny, you, you, young man. Little children all along these altars got their little hands up. Well, bless their little hearts. You say they don't mean that? Oh, yes, they do. Jesus said, Suffer little children to come to me. Forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. They may never live to be in maturity, but they will be. They'll never they'll escape maybe all the great things that we've had to go through with. God, be merciful when you raise your hands. It shows that there's something in you who's made a decision. Your body would be dead if there wasn't something in you. That said, raise your hands as the Spirit. Then you raise your hand. God witness it. The Spirit made you raise your hand. God bless you. And all the little children back there, those little colored children too along there. God bless your little hearts, honey. God loves you. Sure. We're going out of here one of these days. I don't know when it'll be, but it, it's coming. Hurry right quick. Get into the kingdom. You say, well, I've heard that before. You might hear it your last time too. Let this be the time. God bless you back there, young lady. Get away from all this old modern stuff. These old walls. They'll all fall down. All this rock and roll and all this stuff will perish with the world. Don't you be included in the world. You get out of there. God's a coming for His church. He's chose you. That's what He's speaking to you. The message is urgent. Come quickly. Now while we pray, be sincere now and ask God to be merciful to you. Blessed Lord, there might be people here who has never seen the working of the powers of God before, but something down in their heart has said, raise your hand, it's me. And they see that there is an urgent call. They, they're intelligent enough to look around and to see that there's something fixing to happen. Little children, many of them put their little hands up. God be merciful to them. Many of the old and the middle aged, they put their hands up. The teenagers put their hands up. They're wanting mercy, God. And I'm so glad to know that the first revelation of Christ is mercy. The second revelation is judgment. Oh, God, thank you for these who have taken mercy tonight. Mercy's road. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst for righteousness. They shall be filled. Light their lights tonight, Lord. May they be candles that set on a hill that cannot be hid, but give light unto the schools and the places where they'll be connected from hereafter. Grant it, Lord. May they be lights that'll shine for the glory of God. Bless them, and someday in a better world, Lord, may we all meet around that great table of God at that wedding supper. Keep thy spirit up on us, Lord. Bless those standing around the walls and out in the vestibule and around it, raising their hands and so forth. Be with them, Lord. They stood in cramping limbs tonight, but be merciful. Grant these things. They are the fruits of this little hurried up message tonight. I pray that the angels of God will make it so real to their hearts that they won't, they won't miss any of it. And they are the fruits, and I present them to you, and you give them to Jesus because they are your love gifts to Him. No man can pluck them from the hand, because no one is greater than God. And I pray that you'll keep them securely safe until Jesus comes for them. May the rest of them hurry, Lord, and hurry, for the message is urgent. We must get out quickly before destruction comes. Now, Lord God, I pray that you'll send your angel, that same one that sat with Abraham. Grant it, Lord, and could tell what Sarah was doing back in the tent. And that was the angel of the covenant. That was the angel that brought mercy before fire fell. 
Most any time fire could fall now. The atoms that would break the whole world in two. May he come tonight and give mercy to us, Lord. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, there's something about the blessed old gospel that seems to scour you out. I love it. Let's just sing that one time softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling. Everybody, let's just raise our hands to him. Will you do it? Softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling. Shut him with Christ now. never been in one of our healing services before. Let's see your hands. Never been in the services. That's good. I'm so glad to have you here. Now, I don't claim to be a healer. I claim that Jesus is not dead, but he's alive. I'm not a healer. There's no healers. Christ has already healed you. By his stripes, you were healed. But I want to ask you newcomers something. Now you perhaps go to a church. Many of you raised your hand. Just then was raised your hand for prayer a while ago. If you have no church of choice, we welcome you to the Branham Tabernacle here for our dear brother Armand Neville, a godly man that teaches nothing but the truth out of the Bible. You're welcome to our fellowship. We're just not a denomination. We're just a church here, a fellowship. We are Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, Lutheran. We're all. <laughs> we are Christians who love you. And we pray that you'll find you, if you can't come here, get you a good church home somewhere where they really preach the gospel and so that you can be fed by the Spirit of God. All around through the building tonight. If the Lord Jesus has risen from the dead and I've told you the truth, then God's obligated to His Word to make it so. See? Oh, don't be afraid to trust it. That's either the Bible, it's the truth, or it is not the truth. If it isn't the truth, it's the biggest deceiver that's ever been written. For it's got millions deceived. I've stood many times with the Koran in one hand and the Bible in the other before the Mohammedans and say one's right and the other's wrong. Let the God that's real God speak. Don't be afraid. He'll never forsake. He'll never leave. Now, the Lord Jesus, when He was here on earth, the works that He did, which we've just quoted, He promised that He would come again before the end of time and would do the same thing. He said He would do it through His church. Now, He said, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. Now, the, the vine doesn't bear fruit. The branches bears fruit. Now, if it's a pumpkin vine, it'll bear pumpkins. If it's a watermelon vine, it'll bear watermelons. If it's a cantaloupe vine, it'll bear cantaloupes. If it's a grape vine, it'll bear grapes. If it's a Christian vine, it'll bear Christ. The life of Christ, the works of Christ. See? Then our spirits has to be energized by something. I'm so glad to be in Him tonight. You don't know, little flock, how it makes me feel 
No, here I am, 48 years old, an old man. And I've preached now for 27 years. My shoulders are stooping. And oh, I realize I'm not that little boy that used to play marvels out here on the street. But there's one thing I do know. I'm his servant. I'd rather have that than all that I know. For what good would anything else do? I've tried to be honest with you people. I've tried to do everything that I could to be honest and just and true in your presence. And in the presence of God because I know He watches us all the time. Now if I could, I'll tell you now, this little message tonight, I tried to quit early. But I'm praying that God will take the rest of it to your heart. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Get out of bed, but just as quick as you can. Don't stay in the world. Get away from that nonsense. Get out, get out here free with Christ. Get away from those things. For you don't know what hour that there may not be nothing, just powder left on this earth. Just gases and the old world blow to pieces. It can happen before this service closes. And it wouldn't contradict scriptures at all. It would just fulfill scriptures. The gospel's been preached. Here comes the last message. Now, don't look for great things in the future. America has done send away her day of grace. That's exactly right. You mark it in your Bibles and find out whether I'm right or wrong. She's been on the downgrade now for two years. Billy Grimm said at his breakfast not long ago, he held the Bible up. He said, here's the standard. Paul went into the city and had a convert come back the next year and there was 30. He said, I go into the city and have a revival of 20,000 converts and come back in six months and can't find maybe 20. What's the matter? There's just so many fish in the pond. There's just so many that God knew before the foundation of the world and has predestinated the eternal life. When that last one comes in, that settles it. There were just so many birds went into the ark. Just so many different animals went in that ark. And the door was closed by God. And they left the rest of them out. Though they tried to get in. And my dear friend, if you're not in, you get in right now while God's a-calling. Because the doors of mercy might close to the Gentile at any time. Now, now what I do now, what I speak now, I've spoke. And my words, if I'd preached for hours... It wouldn't mean half as much as one word from our lovely Christ. Now, but what I've preached, I've either told the truth or a lie. If I've told a lie, God will have nothing to do with it. If I've told the truth, God will stand behind His Word. How many did you say give out 50 cards? I'll show you why we have to give out cards when you have a meeting of discernment. I don't say that He will do it. He might not. But I want you to be honest with me. How many in here would like to come into the line? Now, raise your hands. All over the building, wherever you are. Everybody in the building that wants to come into the line, raise your hands. Now, how would, who would be first? You couldn't do it. We have to give out the cards in order to keep a, a line. Now, let's give out 50 cards. And let's just call from all around through that bunch of cards. And that'll give everybody a chance to get on. Now, it isn't what happens here. It's what happens here. It isn't touch me, it's touch him. How many knows that the New Testament, the book of Hebrews said that right now that Christ is a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Amen. Well, how would you know you touched him? By he speaks right back. Just like he if he's the same yesterday and ever, he has to manifest himself just the same as he did yesterday and forever. So you see the last message to the Jews and them? How he did it? Now, this is the last. If he manifests himself any other way through a denomination, he would be unjust. He never manifested himself in a denomination because there was no denomination in his days. He manifested himself through the supernatural, as we said this morning, like the handwriting on the wall of the interpretation. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God be with you now. He said 1 to 50. All right. Who has prayer card number one? Would you just raise up your hand? Look at your cards. If somebody on the cots or wherever and can't get up, everybody look at each other's card. It's just a little card. I don't think these have my picture on them even. It's just a plain little card. <clears throat> number one, wherever you are. All right, would you just stand where you are, sir? Number two, would you raise your hand? The lady right here. Number three, would you raise your hand? We are strangers. This is our first time of meeting then in life, I suppose. Then the Lord God knows both of us. He knows all about you and He knows all about me. 
But if he in his kindness would be able, if I'd say to you, oh, sir, you're sick and I'm, you're going to get well, you'd have a right to doubt that. That audience would have a right to be stumped on that. Certainly, you've only got my word. But if the Holy Spirit will come and tell him something that he has done, something that I know nothing about that has been, he'll know whether that's the truth or not. Then if he knows what was, surely if that's right, he can tell you what will be. It'll be right. You should believe that, Miss Cox, shouldn't you? Mrs. Cox said, I just happened to notice her from Kentucky over here. That's Mrs. Woods here somewhere in a church. Her mother, cancer done eat her face off in here. And I was coming down from up in the north woods. My wife called me and said, I've never seen anybody so tore up my life as, as Miss Woods and Miss, Mr. Woods are my bosom friends. And I went over to the lady. Come back out with thus saith the Lord. The cancer died. There's the woman sitting there and you can hardly tell what. Would you just raise up Miss Cox so that people could see the whole side of her nose and all eat down with the cancer plum into her eyes. Turn around so the audience can see you back there. <laughs> cancer. He's always right. He's never wrong. Now if the Lord our God will reveal to this brother, let him be the judge. If the Lord our God will reveal to him what he's here for or something like he did the woman at, or like he would say like he did to Philip when Nathaniel found him. Or Nathan, uh, Philip found Nathaniel. And will reveal it. Would you all believe, all you people believe, if, if the man knows I don't know nothing about him? Now I've got my hands up, I don't know nothing about him. He put his hands up and I didn't know him. Or he don't know me. Then if the Lord will reveal it, you all will accept it, will you? How many? Raise up your hands so I can see. Now the Lord bless you. Now, sir, I'm just standing here waiting to see what he'll tell me. So you be the judge. And if anyone can look, the man's got his eyes closed. So you see, it couldn't be a telepathy. Just remain with your eyes closed. If our Lord Jesus, if he will reveal it, we'll be grateful to him. But the man who stands before me, what he's here for, it's a spiritual affair that he wants prayer for. That is true. If that is right, raise your hand so that people can see. Now, do you believe? Never seen him in my life. But here it was. Something bothering his mind. Now, the more I would talk to him, more would be said. I'd be reverent. What did the angel do? He had his back turned. And he said, why did Sarah laugh? She said, I never laughed. said, oh, yes, you did. Because she was scared. Now, if the audience can still hear my voice over the speakers, the man seems to be going from me. I see a woman standing. That's the main thing the man's here for. It's for his wife. And she is not here with him. And she's got a female trouble, a lady's trouble, and she's got trouble with her back. That's the truth. You're not from this city. You're from another city. It's called uh, Marysville. That's correct. Now go home and find it the way you believed it. It'll be that way. In the name of the Lord. God bless you. That handkerchief, you won't need it to go on her. You had it in your pocket for her, but you won't need it. I do know you. I don't know your name, but you're a woman that was standing there at the back door one day that the angel of the Lord come to me when your first time shared the tabernacle and revealed something was a perfect secret and you were healed with a cancer. That's right. <laughs> but I have no idea what's the matter with you now. I don't know. You know that. I have no idea what's wrong with you. But if the Lord will reveal it, you will accept it. I, you're not here for yourself. You're here for a, a child. And that child is afflicted. And the affliction is in the spine. Like can't stand up or something like that. 
And I see the parents of that child uh, with a rosary. Uh, uh, they're Catholic. And an older couple. It's their grandparents are Catholic too. And you're standing for the child. Take your handkerchief and put it on it. Don't doubt. You can have what you ask for. I believe with all your heart. You believing? I suppose this lady is a stranger to me. We're strangers to each other. But the Lord Jesus knows both of us. Now here's a perfect picture. Here's a picture of St. John 4. A colored woman, a white man. In that day it was a Samaritan and a Jew, two races of people. Jesus let her know quickly that there was no difference. We're all God's creatures. The country we live in, changing our color, has nothing to do. God wanted his people that way. He made men white, black, brown, yellow, red. He made them that way. That's his business. And he loves us all. But here's a perfect picture. Two people that's never met before, and our first time, two different races. Now, I perceive that you are a believer. You're a Christian because your spirit is welcome. And that great angel of God would not welcome nothing. That was wrong. Certainly not. You see that picture up there, that angel uh, on that picture there? That light up above where I'm standing? That's what's making you feel the way you're feeling now. It's just coming all down over you. Just a moment, Sister Gertie. It seems to be something. I can't catch the lady just right. Yes, the woman is suffering with a nervous condition. She gets nervous. She drops things. That's right. And then you've got a spiritual problem that you're trying to solve out because you've been praying over for some time. That is true. you got arthritis. I see you trying to get from your bed. Slow, especially of a morning. You got something wrong in your spine, too. A spinal trouble. That's thus saith the Lord. You believe me to be God's prophet? You believe the same God that knowed Simon would know you? If God will reveal that, will it make you a strong believer that you get what you get? They call you nanny. And your last name's Johnson. And you live in New Albany. Return home and be well. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. <coughs> Just believe. Are we strangers to each other, lady? We are. Just so, just so the people will see, would you just raise your hand and say we are strangers? Just Now the Lord God knows us both. And if he will grant this request, you will be happy for it. Now some of these begin to believe. Now they keep being a white man up here before this woman here. It's a man sitting right there. You got that's all right. Just stay where you're at. You got kidney trouble. You got back trouble, and you got stomach trouble. That's right. I go believing, and it won't bother you anymore. You just believe. I challenge your faith to believe it. How many does believe it with all your heart? All right, then look and live. If the Lord our God will reveal to this woman who's a total stranger to me, and there's our hands up that we've never met before, knowingly, and if the Lord our God will reveal to this woman and do the same thing that he did like the woman at the uh, Samaria and woman, will you all believe with all your heart then that'll settle it forever with you? See, I've got a meeting coming up. I've got to leave tomorrow. I got to go to Virginia and a great meeting coming. I don't want to get two weeks standing here. All right. 
I shall take time, just a moment, with the woman. You believe. Ever who the woman is, she's got a horrible looking darkness following her. Oh, it's, it's sorrow. You've just had some trouble. You lost a child, a baby. That's right. And another thing, you're bothered with a female trouble, a lady's trouble, and a back trouble. And you also have some kind of a something that happens to you like fainting away, epilepsy. That's right. You're not from this city either. You crossed the river to get here. You're from Louisville. You live at a number called 1754 West Oak Street. Your name is Margaret Quinn. All right. Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, Amen. give to this woman that what she desires. Amen. For I ask this enemy to leave her in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, lady. Don't doubt no more. Go and receive now what you've asked for. You believe with all your heart? Amen. How do you do, sir? This is our first time meeting, I suppose. You believe the Lord our God is here to perform and give to you the things you desire? I admire your courage. And you're here for a legitimate thing. You want to get rid of drinking and smoking. Well, it's gone from you now. Go and God's peace be with you. And make yourself God be with you. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. You want to get rid of that back trouble? Go down there and praise Him and you'll get rid of it. Just go believe in it with all your heart. If thou canst believe, the Bible says. Be reverent. Believe what God is doing to be the truth. I know you. I'm just going to pray for you. I know your trouble. Lord God, be merciful to the woman and grant this request. For I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I don't remember. Is your name Baker? Yes. Sir. That's right. I, I remember. Now, God bless you. Go right ahead now. I'm believing with all your heart. All right. I don't know you, lady. We're strangers. That's right. You want to eat your supper? Get rid of that stomach trouble? That ulcer you had all these time? Go eat then. In Jesus Christ, make you well. Amen. I do know you, and I know what your trouble is. You don't know. You don't know it. I know it, but I, I do know it. So, being that you're come here to the Tabernacle, I won't say it. But the Arthur Innocent, I'll, I'll leave you if you just believe it. You go ahead. God bless you. Let's say thanks be to God. You're nervous too. Got a stomach trouble bothering you. You believe that the Lord Jesus will make you well? Then go and God's peace rest upon you. Just want to lay hands on you. And to believe with all of our heart that God will do it. I'm a stranger to you, I suppose, lady. You know me? You come here to church? You do. I've never seen you. Of course, so many people comes in. All right. You go believing in that female trouble will leave you. The lady's trouble you have. Do you believe? Yes. All right. Then go and God will be with you and help you, I'm sure. Do you believe, sir? You believe the Lord take that stiffness away from you and make you well? That arthritis? Go right on back to there thanking Him and praising Him for it, and you'll get all right. You're bothered with nervous trouble, aren't you, lady? That's a mental nervousness. You get real weak, suffer with spells, especially late in the afternoon. Even Satan's told you to go lose your mind. That's right, but it's a lie. You're going to be well. It's nothing but just the time of life that you're coming into. It's menopause. Every woman has to come to that. But you're going to be all right. Now, do you believe my word? Then go thank God and sing songs and rejoice and be made well. All right, lady. I'm a stranger to you, too. The funny thing, when I said that to her, it left you the same time because that's exactly what your trouble was, nervousness. Now, you go on your road and believe with all your heart and you'll get well. Amen. Go and believe with all your heart. I know you, lady. I know your face, but I don't. Do you believe God will heal you? I know who you are now. Your lady comes here at the tabernacle. you believe God will heal you? Let me just pray for you. Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, amen. make the woman well, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't doubt. I can't think of the woman's name, but I know who she... 
How about you people out here in the audience? Are you believing? I said real quiet. Be real reverent. In this direction here, somebody, I challenge your faith in the name of Jesus Christ to believe this. A colored lady has her hands up there. Do you believe, lady, me to be God's servant? If God will reveal to me what's your trouble, will you accept it? You want prayer for yourself and that little girl for your eyes sitting there. That's right. Put your hand over on the child and believe with all your heart. Lord God, I pray that they will receive it in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. You believe? Amen. There's the angel of the Lord standing with this black-headed fellow. Uh, I believe he comes to church here. Oh, I'm not sure. Sir, if I know you, I don't know what's wrong with you. Unless God would reveal it, but his summit, his mercy, is standing here. You got a an ulcer on the foot, the left foot. That's right. Your your faith touched something. What about you over in this section? Do you believe? Have faith and don't down. Here's a lady set you with a black hat on with glasses on. You got a prayer card, lady? Right behind that little boy there. At the end of the row. You. You have a prayer card? You don't have a prayer card? Do you believe me to be God's prophet? If God will reveal to me what your trouble is, will you accept it then? You have heart trouble. That's your husband sitting next to you. And he's got gland trouble. Now go and believe. Who believes him? Amen. What about this colored man sitting here? Do you believe, sir? Yes, sir. You believe me to be his servant? Yes. You're wanting prayer, aren't you? Yes. If God will reveal to me from me to you, do you believe he, that you could accept it? Yes. You got sinus trouble. Yes, sir. And you got a rupture. Yes. That's right. Uh, How about any of you in there? Do you believe? There's another colored woman right behind this lady back here. You got your hand up, sister. Do you want something from the Lord? You believe me to be his servant? It's a boy's trouble you're suffering with. That's right. You believe he heals you? Right out from you there. Look around the side right out from you there at the end of the row. About one, two, three, four, five people back there. You got thyroid trouble. You believe that God will make you well? What about right back here, the man on the end of the seat? Right back in the row here. You got ulcerated colitis. That's right, sir. You believe God heals you? Then stand up and accept it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you. I've never seen you. You're a stranger to me. But God knows you. You believe it, every one of you? Do you believe the same angel of God that come to Abraham in mercy? Who know the secrets of the thoughts of Sarah? The same one that stood on the earth and know the secrets of the thoughts of the mind? Don't you believe that He's here now? The same God just before the world burns again in a destruction? Don't you believe He's here? Then let's accept Him. Let's believe Him. Let's take Him as our healer right now. How many of you will believe that? How many of you really believe? Put your hands up. Now let you put your hands down. The Bible said this, These signs shall follow them that believe. Put your hands on one another then if you're believers. You pray for the person next to you and the one next to you pray for you. You that's being prayed for. Each one of you pray one for another now. Any word in the building. I challenge this faith. The lady there with TB. Forget about it. You're healed. You with prostate trouble sitting there. Sir, getting up at night. Forget it. You won't have to do it no more. God bless you. I challenge you to... Make an act of believing. Do you do it? Then pray, each one of you, your own way. Lay your hands on somebody and pray for somebody next to you. While I pray for all of you. Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, author of everlasting life, giver of every good gift, send thy spirit just now upon this people. I condemn the works of the devil because the devil is exposed. Satan, you can't hold him any longer. Their faith is mounting up. 
and they got their hands on each other. And I challenge you that you have lost the battle and judgment is at hand. Come out of them in the name of Jesus Christ. Go from them in Jesus' name. Do you believe him? Raise your hands and give him praise for your healing. If you're crippled, stand up on your feet. Christ makes you well. If you're lame, got your hands crippled, raise them up. It's all over. There's a crippled woman here standing up. Praise the Lord. Let's say praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen.